Hello, it's Tubal Cain again, and uh, this time our third in a series of uh, antique toy steam engines. And with me, I have uh, my grandson Jordan, sometimes called Tubal Cain Jr., and today he's disguised as Superman. Say hi, Jordan. Hi. Today, this little engine that we're going to show you is uh, totally unmarked. I got it uh, at a garage sale years ago. There is absolutely no name or number or anything else on it. If anybody knows who made it, you can let me know. It has a horizontal uh, nickel-plated brass boiler and uh, a little zinc flywheel. And Jordan has just added water to it. And point to the water uh, filler right there and he's put about a cup of water in there and point to the little whistle Jordan there's a little whistle on it and the steam dome is right here that's the high point in the boiler and the exhaust goes up through here and into the little stubby uh, chimney so the chimney has somewhat of a purpose in uh, this engine this little engine has a 7 8 bore, a 7 8 stroke, and about a 3 and a quarter inch of flywheel. On uh, this end is a sight glass, and it's still in working condition, and you can see the level of the water in the boiler. I wish all of my boilers had a nice little sight glass like that that still works, but that seems to be the first thing that fails. It's all fogged up. Jordan, uh, my junior engineer, has already oiled or is oiling the uh, points where it uh, moves and we're waiting for it to get up to steam. It's almost there. While it's heating and it smoked a little when I first turned it on but it's going to take a little while to get up to heat but a couple other points here that uh, right next to the whistle this is the filler plug and that also serves as a pressure relief valve. On the other side of the cylinder here is the spool valve and this is a double acting engine that means that uh, when this uh, end of one stroke the piston will get pushed one way and at the end of the other stroke it will get pushed back. A lot of the other engines that I showed you are single acting so this runs real smooth once it gets up to heat. On the far side of it is a little pulley where you can run your accessories. Point to it, Jordan, right there. It's right over here. This is not a particularly uh, graceful or good looking engine as far as that entire black base is concerned, but yet I rather like the boiler. Okay, we're up to pressure now, which is probably like five pounds of pressure maximum. And note that we have the exhaust coming out of uh, the chimney. Toot the whistle, Jordan. That is high and shrill and piercing. Even I can hear that with my bad ears. Seems to run pretty smoothly. That are all oiled properly, Jordan? Yes. Here, 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 and here. Yep. I suspect this is about 400 watts, but I could not find uh, the uh, UL ratings or anything like that, but I would suspect this was made in the 40s or 50s. Not real sure. I think there's some of you steam fans out there that might uh, give me some information on this. My granddaughter Sophia is here, and uh, Sophia, come on and step down into the picture real quick, will you please? Right next to Jordan. Come on. Oh, she's playing shy. I don't think she's coming over, but today is Mother's Day, the year 2013. So we got grandkids running all around today, and that's why I'm running those. Step into the picture, Sophia. I'm wearing my pretty shoes. Here's Sophia. She's got new shoes on or something. It's, her, it's Andrew's. <laughs> oh, she's running away. She's going to go out and play on the trampoline. Anyway, we're down here in the basement and chugging away. 
here's the view from the other side and it's uh, not very pretty really on this side there's not not much charm to it at all well Jordan just had an idea he said we ought to put some marshmallows or Vienna sausages or something over the steam there but uh, the view here shows you a little bit about the uh, the valve that's a pretty good view there uh, pu put your pointer on the valve Jordan no, that's the piston, the spool valve. Closer to the engine is the valve. Is it right here? Yeah, that's the valve. And there has been a repair to this uh, years ago, and not a very good repair right here. There's some soldering or something going on that isn't very pretty. Okay, now we're going to move on to the next engine. So that's it for this one. Next on the lineup is this little Robert Fulton engine. And if you have not watched my other video where I uh, have totally overhauled or restored this engine, be sure and watch that. It's rather lengthy, but and I have run this uh, little uh, engine in that video, but I'm going to run it again today with Jordan. Some of you probably haven't seen it. But this little engine is uh, fired by Sterno. And it's designed such a can of, uh, such as a can of Sterna will fit under there very nicely. However, it won't run on Sterno fuel. So I am running it with alcohol, denatured alcohol. <laughs> and uh, it would not run with just one wick. So my homemade uh, little can here has two wicks, and that's nothing more than clothesline. So we're going to fire that up here presently. There was a beautiful decal on this engine, but it, it was lost in the restoration, but it said Robert Fulton engine on it, and it's made by Marvin Industries, and that's embossed on the very bottom, Chicago, Illinois, probably made about in the 50s. My brother had an engine like this, and it was electric, so they made them uh, both ways. I think they made a vertical engine, uh, or a horizontal engine as well. This is a vertical boiler. This little engine has a uh, chimney. Put the chimney on, Jordan, but it is a false chimney, a faux chimney. It doesn't do anything, except it's ornamental, but usually these are lost by small boys over the years. But on the top is a tiny little whistle. And then the filler plug on the other side, I had to make new gaskets for them. Point, yeah. And the filler plug is also a pressure relief valve. The firebox is down below, and you can see a, a can of Sterno fits in there perfectly, so it must have been designed for such. The little zinc flywheel is uh, about two and three quarters diameter. And now uh, turn the engine toward me, Jordan. Rotate the machine. There we go. This is a little uh, wobbler or oscillating type engine. That's right. Turn it back and forth a little bit. And that's made of zinc. And the little crank down there is made of zinc. And then the rest of the entire engine is steel. It was totally rusted into two pieces when I got it at a garage sale. But So take a look at that other video. Jordan has already uh, filled it with distilled water. And how much water did you put in there, Jordan? You remember? Mm, about maybe 900 cc's. About 100 cc's of water. He works in the metric system. I'm old school and I talk ounces. And... Uh, so now I'm going to fire it up, and uh, when the steam is ready, we'll come back. Okay, Jordan has fired up the firebox. we got those twin wicks burning. Now, again, that is a false chimney. It doesn't do a blame thing except look pretty, and I, I do like the looks of it on a vertical boiler. But all the excess heat is coming out of these little holes. This will heat up fairly fast. This little engine has a 3 8 bore. It's a tiny wobbler engine oscillating. So the valves are built in and we talked about that in other uh, videos. And it's a 5 8 stroke. Now be sure and watch my many many other videos on the steam engines, machine shop, and then there's about three or four strictly on these little antique engines and there are some of you out there that really like these things. And I don't see how anyone could not like them. 
but be, when you're done with your engines be sure and empty them oil them dry them out leave the caps off for a couple days but most of these little antique toy engines were destroyed by small boys just through lack of instruction and little parts got missing and if they left the water in them they rusted through if they were made of steel and a lot of these cheaper ones this was probably a cheap one or my dad could not have afforded it okay the Robert Fulton is running toot the little whistle Jordan probably won't hear. It's a tiny little whistle. And it does leak a little bit out of the bottom packing. Now this is a double acting wobbler engine. Not single. Rotate that engine. Uh, yeah. Now we get to watch. I'm going to zoom in to see where it's leaking there. The steam leak. That's where the piston rod goes into the engine. I don't believe there's any kind of real packing. It's just supposed to be a good fit. These little engines were probably very, very cheaply made. Put a little oil in there. Most of that gets washed away. They do make a, an oil for steam engines that tends to uh, stay and not get washed away. Years ago it was some kind of lan lanolin oil. Steam oil I believe contained lanolin. Which came from sheep I think. Mm -hmm. My mom's in sheep school. Kind of a cute little whistle. My ears cannot pick that up. It just... Go ahead and toot the whistle Jordan. Don't burn yourself. Everything is hot. Now don't let real small children operate these without uh, supervision. Can you hear anything? Yeah. Okay. I, I couldn't hear that at all. Okay. We're going to let the fuel run out. That was a denatured alcohol. And that concludes this video with these two engines. I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I think Jordan did, although you're not sleeping yet, are you, Jordan? No. Oh, you're just getting a good view. Okay. Yeah, and have your grandkids do this instead of video games. It's funner. It's more fun, he said. So... This is it for now. So long. This is Tubal Cain and... Tubal Cain Jr. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye.